Greetings, everyone. My name is Brady Witten, and I welcome you to online worship here at First United Methodist Church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. As we begin worship, I want to invite you, as I always do, to consider sharing uh, this time of worship with others uh, on Facebook. You can just go down and click share. If you're on one of our other platforms, just copy the link out of the browser and, and send it to someone. But uh, be, a, be a part of inviting someone to join you in worship at this time. So today is the third Sunday of Lent. And Lent is a 40-day season of spiritual preparation, uh, a time of repentance and prayer as we seek to draw nearer to God before the celebration of Easter. Uh, Today in worship, we're going to celebrate spiritual communion together. Uh, We're going to hear a reminder and a call from God that we are to live lives of moral excellence. Uh, It's my prayer that during this time of worship that you will encounter the presence of God, uh, that you'll hear a word of God, the word of God for your life, uh, and that your love and your commitment to Christ will be strengthened and renewed. I invite you to pray with me. Let us pray. Father of light, in you is found no shadow of change, but only the fullness of life and limitless truth. Open our hearts to the voice of your word and free us from the original darkness that shadows our vision. Restore our sight that we may look upon your Son, who calls us to repentance and a change of heart. Lord, pour your Holy Spirit out upon us as we worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And now I invite you to join in our opening hymn, O God Who Gives Us Life. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the prayer and discipline of Lent, may we enter into the mystery of Christ's sufferings, and by following in his way, 
come to share in his glory. Send your spirit now to illuminate your holy word through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's reading is from the book of Exodus. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son, your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien residents in your town. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in it, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you ever done anything wrong that really weighed on your conscience? So when I was a kid, I lived in a neighborhood where there were a lot of other children my age, and we would go outside and we would play for you know, long stretches. I mean, sometimes we'd be out from the morning until the evening, and our parents had to kind of force us to come in at the end of the day. Uh, we played basketball, football, tag, all, all the things that kids usually do. And I admit, sometimes we got into a little bit of trouble. We played one game called Ding Dong Ditch. Do you know what that game is? It's, maybe you have a different name for it, where you go up to somebody's house and you ring the doorbell, and then you run away. And, but, you know, we would stand off someplace to watch the person come to the door, ha, ha, ha. I realized you really can't play that game anymore, right? Because now everybody has ring doorbells, and so they would know, they would know who was there. But there was this one boy in our neighborhood, his name was Robert, and Robert had some developmental challenges. And uh, Robert and I would often play one-on-one together, and I liked Robert, we were friends. But I'll never forget a time that I was hanging out with kind of a gang of boys, and Robert came around, and those boys started making fun of him. And I joined in, and I made fun of Robert too, and I, and I teased him. Uh, and I knew it was wrong when I did it, uh, I felt bad about it then, and there are some times where I look back and I think about those things, and I, I feel bad about it now, and I, I, I don't know what happened to Robert. I really hope and I pray that he's doing well, but can you think about things like that? Can you think of things from your life that, you know, maybe you did that kind of weigh on you? Maybe there are things from your childhood. Maybe there are things that are going on in your life right now, things that make your conscience ache. So if you can think of something like that, what I want to ask you to do is be glad. Be glad. And I'm serious. See, when God spoke to Moses, which is uh, what we're reading when we read the Ten Commandments, we're reading the words of God. Uh, When God spoke to Moses and the Jewish people, one of the ways his voice manifested was in rules and laws, in right and in wrong. Uh, That voice inside of us, that voice that knows the difference between right and wrong, the voice that recoils at hurt and pain that we cause, that is God's voice. Or at least it's the the fingerprints or the the shadow of God's voice in our human uh, conscience and heart. Uh, Now, I do want to say, it's not that voice that kind of makes you, you know, that that talks down to you or belittles you about those things, but it is the voice that points out to you and says, you know what, Uh, maybe that's not how you should behave and, and that calls you to something higher. Our God is a moral God. 
and God's voice is a moral voice. So here in Exodus 20, we have one of the most famous sets of God's rules and laws. And there are many, many, many of them in the scriptures, but the Ten Commandments are kind of the cornerstone of them all. Uh, Years ago, somebody gave me this uh, uh, thing called the Hillbilly Ten Commandments, and it kind of summarizes them, I think, you know, kind of in in an amusing way, Uh, but they're this, just one God, put nothing before God, no cussing, get to Sunday meetings, listen to your ma and your pa, no killing, no cheating on your gal, don't take what ain't yours. No gossiping. Hands off your buddy's stuff. And so, again, just an an amusing way of talking about the Ten Commandments. But these commandments all tell us something about who God is and what God wants for humanity. Uh, As a whole, God's law, including the Ten Commandments, command fidelity to God, that our relationship with God is very important. They command fairness, honesty, justice, compassion. Now, despite what we may have thought as children, or despite what some adults may think today, God's rules and laws are not intended to rob us of life, but to give us life. So can you imagine what life would be like, what the world would be like if people were just killing each other, stealing from each other, lying about each other? Well, on second thought, maybe we don't have to imagine that hard. Uh, But how about the opposite? Could you imagine what life would be like if people were united in their love and worship of God, if they were united in their love and respect for one another? The law is a gift from God that points to the heart of God. It it speaks to us of who God is and what God values. And it also points us uh, to, to what a good and an abundant life looks like. So it shouldn't surprise us that when Jesus came, this is what he had to say about the law. In Matthew 5, 17, he says this, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. You know, a lot of people say, well, Jesus came now. We don't have to worry about the law anymore. But why would Jesus do that? If if the law is partly the voice of God, it's God's call to goodness, and if it's partly showing us the way to life, why would Jesus, you know, rule out the law? He doesn't. He says, I came to fulfill the law. But then Jesus takes things in a slightly different direction. Uh, He says this, this is Matthew 5, 20. But I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of the heavens. Now listen, the scribes and the Pharisees were some of the strictest law keepers of Jesus' day. Uh, They were experts in the law. Uh, they, they had spreadsheets for the law. I mean, they, they, just, they, were, they were masters of it. Uh, they were like rule accountants or rule engineers, and no offense to accountants or engineers. And yet Jesus tells us when it comes to following him, we have to do better than them. Then Jesus goes on. Uh, and this is uh, found, really, this is really kind of the, 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 the whole tenor of the Sermon on the Mount. He goes on to say things like this. Uh, You've heard it was said, thou shalt not murder. Well, where did we hear that? We heard it in the Ten Commandments. Jesus says, you've heard it was said, thou shalt not murder, but I tell you, if you have anger in your heart against your brother, you're in danger of the fire, you're in danger of the fires of hell. He says, you've heard it was said, thou shalt not commit adultery. Well, where, where does it say that? It says it in the Ten Commandments. And Jesus goes on to say, but I tell you that if you look at a woman with lust in your eyes, you're guilty of adultery. He goes on to say, thou shalt not bear false witness. You've heard it was said, you know, don't, don't, don't tell lies. Well, where did we hear that? In the Ten Commandments. But he says, I say to you, yet let your yes be yes and your no be no. See, it's not enough for us just to not murder. Jesus says we are to become the kind of people who don't hate. It's not enough just to not commit adultery. Jesus says we're to become the kind of people who don't treat one another as objects of desire. It's not enough that we just don't lie. Jesus says we are to be people who live and radiate truth. 
So let me ask you, when you hear that description of being that kind of person, a person who doesn't have hatred, a person who doesn't objectify others, a person who speaks truth, is that something you want? Uh, Are you tired of the hurt and the pain that you see in the world? Are Are you tired of playing a part in that hurt yourself? Do you want to be a part of God's good and right-making in the world? Do you? Uh, Do you know where all of that starts, where that begins? It begins right here, right here. Uh, And do you know how? Do you know how to begin to move in that direction of being that type of person? So we're in the season of Lent, and it's a time of self-examination, a time where we're really asked to look at our lives and ask ourselves maybe some hard truths. And so I think how we do it is we can start by looking within. We can examine our hearts and our lives. Uh, Do you have a voice inside of you that's pointing you to places that need redirection, places that need healing, places that need new life? Are there things in your life that you see as harmful and you experience as harmful to yourself or to others? Learn God's law and apply it to your life in the best of your abilities. Not in a rigid, accountant, rule-keeping kind of way, but in a life-giving, God and other honoring kind of way. Uh, If you want to know Really, I, I encourage you to read the, the Sermon on the Mount, which is Matthew 5 through 7, which is sort of Jesus' interpretation of the Ten Commandments. Strive to be a person of moral excellence in all things. Uh, it matters. So uh, just last week, a friend of mine called me and, uh, and encouraged me to try to sign up to get a COVID t- uh, test someplace because word had gotten out that preachers were uh, or clergy were invited to get a COVID test. So I went online with one of the local websites and uh, started filling out the form and filling out the information. And one of the questions that was asked is, have you been exposed to somebody who has COVID in the last 14 days? And I checked off, yes, I had been. Um, and of course, the, the, the sign-up form immediately booted me out. And, and I, I told my friend, I said, oh, I said, I couldn't sign up because it booted me out. It, it asked me this question about, uh, you know, had I been exposed to somebody in the last 14 days? And I put yes. And my friend looked kind of funny at me and said, you're so honest. <laughs> and it was, it was just kind of a funny moment. I was like, Is that, should that really be a surprise that we're so honest? Strive to be a person of moral excellence in all things. And I can tell you that that part of myself I felt much better about than the part of me that teased Robert so long ago. Most importantly, most importantly, walk with Jesus. Uh, In John 15, 4, Jesus says this, Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you bear fruit unless you abide in me. See, through life in Christ, you and I become new creations by living life with Jesus. Through life in Christ, we seek to keep not just the bare minimum of the moral law, checking off boxes here and there, but we seek to exceed the law and become beings of love and joy and peace and patience and goodness. Uh, We become the kind of people who do what is good and right, not because it's written on a piece of paper, but because it's written on our hearts. That's who God made us to be. That's who God wants us to be. That's who we can be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Almighty God, we confess that we are often swept up in the tide of our generation. We have failed in our calling to be your holy people, a people set apart for your divine purpose. We live more in apathy, born of fatalism, than in passion, born of hope. We are moved more by private ambition than by social justice. We dream more of privilege and benefits than of service 
and sacrifice. We try to speak in your name without relinquishing our glories, without nourishing our souls, without relying wholly on your grace. Help us to make room in our hearts and lives for you. Forgive us, revive us, and reshape us in your image. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will cleanse us of our sins and from all unrighteousness. May the almighty and merciful Lord grant us remission of all of our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and the consolation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, as people who have made peace with God through our confession and believe in our reconciliation and forgiveness, let us make peace with each other and with our neighbors by extending the peace of Christ to each other. Peace be with you. So I want to invite you uh, to a few things that just intending to our life together as a community of faith. And uh, you'll find links for all of these on whatever site that you're worshiping on. Uh, And the first thing is to take a moment and fill out a connection card. Uh, A connection card is a way you can just let us know that you're worshiping with us. Uh, We're we're glad that you chose to worship with us, but we'd also like to know that you're here. And uh, just take a moment, click on that link that says connection card, give us your name, your email address, and we just want to be able to welcome you and and say thanks for for worshiping. Uh, You'll also see opportunities to fill out prayer requests, and uh, it's our privilege to lift those joys and concerns before God in prayer. And then finally, you'll see opportunities to give. Uh, You can give via text message. You can give on our church's website, and you can always mail a gift to the church as well. So here in Louisiana, our governor has announced that we are entering into phase three of our COVID recovery. And because of that, some restrictions are being lifted. And so we're making a few changes at First Methodist Church that I want to make sure that you know about. Uh, First of all, uh, we are going to ask people to continue to make registration if you're going to come to in-person worship. And we're going to continue that through Easter. Uh, Easter is often a high attendance Sunday, and we just want to make sure we're monitoring the size of our crowds as we head into that weekend. Uh, but after Easter, we're going uh, to stop doing, uh, asking people to make registrations to come to worship. Uh, we will increase the number of people in our sanctuary worship services from 150 to 200. And we're going to increase the number of people in our America Street service from 75 to 100. We still at, we'll ask people to wear masks. We'll still ask people to uh, practice social distancing and, uh, and also ask people to do the hand sanitizers and all that stuff. But we're going to increase the number of people that we're uh, letting into the building. And again, th- I'm excited about this. It's a great step in the right direction. And I hope that you'll continue to be in prayer uh, when it's safe and when you're ready about returning to worship. And with those things said, I'll invite you to ask God, uh, help, help me to ask God's blessing over this time of offering. Let us pray. God of the wilderness, we give these offerings in gratitude, rejoicing in the abundance of your gifts to us. We give these offerings in faith, trusting that you will provide our needs. We give these offerings in hope, knowing that we can use them to spread your love in this world. And with these offerings, we give ourselves. May we live with generous hearts and with open hands. Amen.
At this time, I'd like to invite you to spiritual communion, and and you'll find all of your parts on the screen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You brought all things into being and called them good. From the dust of the earth, you formed us into your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. When rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, you bore up the ark on the waters to save Noah and his family and made covenant with every living creature on earth. When you led your people to Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, and gave us your commandments and made us your covenant people. When your people forsook your covenant, your prophet Elijah fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and on your holy mountain he heard your still small voice. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. When you gave him to save us from our sin, your spirit led him into the wilderness where he fasted 40 days and 40 nights to prepare for his ministry. When he suffered and died on a cross for our sin, you raised him to life, presented him alive to the apostles during 40 days, and exalted him at your right hand. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Now when we, your people, prepare for the yearly feast of Easter, you lead us to repentance for sin and the cleansing of our hearts that during these 40 days of Lent we may be gifted and graced to reaffirm the covenant you made with us through Christ Jesus. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, will you join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ, which is given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. 
And now I invite you to join me in the prayer for spiritual communion. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I believe you are spiritually present in the sacrament of Holy Communion. I love you above all things and hunger to be drawn nearer to you through your body, which was broken for me. In this time of isolation, confusion, fear, loss, and loneliness, when your church cannot gather physically at your table, I long for your presence. I ask you now to come spiritually into my heart. I welcome and embrace you. I unite myself to you and to the church past, present, and future. Let nothing ever separate me from you or you from me. Amen. And let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for this holy meal, this mystery in which you make yourself available to us. And Lord, having partaken of your presence and your spirit, we ask that you would fill us and live in us, that we might touch all we meet with your presence and your love. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. So it's my privilege always uh, as an act of worship to extend to you the invitation to consider making First United Methodist Church your church home. Uh, we do ask our members to confess their faith in Christ and to make promises to this community of faith uh, to support it with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. And in return, the community makes those promises back to you. Uh, but we have a gathering that we call Believe and Belong uh, where we discuss these things. We talk about what does it mean to believe in Jesus? Uh, what does it mean to belong to a community of faith? And if you're at the very beginning of your Christian journey, maybe Jesus is just beginning to nudge your heart, uh, or if you've been at this for some time and are, and are looking for a church home, we'd love to invite you to come and be a part of that conversation. The upcoming dates are March 21st and March 23rd, and you can reach out to Karen Milioto uh, for more information or to let us know that you're coming. And now I want to invite you to join in our closing hymn. So I'm really glad that you joined us for worship today. And I want to end just to, get to remind you to, to, to think about the, the theme that we've been talking about today. Are you tired of the hurt and the pain uh, that you see in our world? Are you tired of playing a part in the hurt and pain yourself? Do you want to be a part of God's good, right-making work in the world? Then examine yourself. Look within Listen to that voice, that voice of conscience. Uh, abide in Christ. 
and allow him to begin to inform your decisions and your actions. Live a life of moral excellence. That is who God made you to be. It's who God wants you to be. It's who you can be. Now go and be it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.